Matthew chapter 10. And when he had called on him the twelve disciples, twelve is a number of Israel. It always has, always will be. Twelve, twelve sons of Jacob, twelve divisions of the land. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. When Jesus came the first time, Israel has just been infested with the devil. When he comes the second time, they're not only infested with the devil, but the devil is there incarnate to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So there is a difference between sickness and disease. According to the Bible. Now, the name of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter. He's the well known. Andrew, his brother. Now, we learn later in the gospel, Andrew's the one that brought Peter. But they're brothers, they're fishermen. James, the son of Zebedee. And John, his brother. So we got two sets of brothers, two sets of fishermen. Philip, you'll see him. Bartholomew, you don't really hear much about him, but don't account him for not anything. We'll learn about him in, in glory. Just because he's not making the big news, the big stories. Thomas, that's old Downing Thomas there. Well, you'll see Thomas has guts. Matthew, the publican, you know, the tax collector. Knows how knows how that side note by the Holy Spirit. He's the publican. He probably be the worst hated one of all. The tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, two James. Levius, whose surname is Thaddeus. Again, another one that you really don't hear nothing about. Simon, there's another Simon. The Canaanite. The Canaanites were of Ham in the land that belonged to Israel. Before Israel came in the land, that's a colored man. One of the disciples is colored. I wonder what that, that, that Last Supper painting. I never even looked, I don't even care to look at that picture. The closest I ever came to that picture is when I almost knocked it off the show at the store I was at. And Judas Iscariot. Who also betrayed him. Now with that. Look, look at verse 1. The 12. Power against unclean spirits. All manner of healing of sickness and disease. And Judas is mentioned. Judas will betray Jesus. And he's doing the work of the ministry as of the other 12 disciples. As a matter of fact, the disciples, when told that one of them were going to betray Jesus, they had no idea. And they asked, Who is it, Lord? He says, Who will I take the sop? And he takes the sop and he gives it to Judas. Judas takes off and Oh, maybe he went to bring some groceries. You better be careful who is lurking in your church. Because he may look like, he may act like perfection. A Christian. And he may be Jewish. These twelve, twelve, we just saw the names of the twelve. Judas, one of them. 
Jesus sent forth and commanded them, Go not in the way of the Gentiles. This is not a Jewish, I mean, excuse me, this is not a Gentile book. It is not a church book. Gentiles, Jesus says, don't go. Have you got it? Can it get any more clear? And unto any of the city of the Samaritans. The Samaritans were half breed Jews. They were Jewish, married to Gentiles. And Jesus said, even half breeds, don't you go to them. But but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You can't find anywhere really of the, the animal sheep outright pointing to a Christian or the church. Right there in John chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, something to that. The Israelites are sheep. The sheep are Israelites. We're going to build churches. We're going to, we're going to do all this. Come and bring them in. Bring them in. How well are you out to get Jews saved? As you go preach, Judas. Judas had the signs of the, the disciples and he preached. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus hasn't died yet. Tell the Jews, the kingdom's come. The king is talking to them. Nowhere is Jesus spoken about the king of the church. Nowhere is the church to look for a kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom is not, is not a church Christian prayer. Heal the sick, and includes Judas. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, resurrection, cast out devils, and Judas is going to get the, the devil. Freely, that's the word that Eve left out. Genesis 3. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. Can you see a Baptist preacher saying, oh, we don't want no gold, we don't want no silver, we don't want no brass. As they run to Malachi, you gotta fill the storehouse of God. Or he, you're robbing for God. Oh, the, the, the preacher will run to the to the commission of Matthew. He'll run over there, our Father, our heaven, hallowed be thy name. He'll run to the Sermon on the Mount, but they won't run, run to ten nine. Oh, you don't need to put no money in that pot, that plate, that box. How about this one? Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. A man shall not wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman should not wear what pertains to a man, and the men have the purses. And David's in the cave, and he cut off King Saul's skirt. And you want your females, you want your lady to, to, to go to 
these camp knees and all that, and you want them to go run around the baseball field in their dresses and slide and all that and maybe show some ungood beauties. Pants is of the devil. Can I have a book, chapter, and verse, please? I shall not wear what pertains to a woman and a woman. Okay, where's your skirt, buddy? Where's your purse? Neither nor scripts for your journey. Nor neither two coats. What Jesus is telling us is you go with the bare necessities. I have been told there have been preachers, they go off to a preacher's fellowship or to another church for revival meetings. Let's say seven days. They got seven suits they bring. They would not dare to wear the same suit at least once. They may have more. Does your closet have a lot more clothes than you need? Neither shoes. Wow. Tell them to go barefoot. Nor yet stays, and that's that walking stick. He doesn't even want you to look like you have a weapon. A stave could be used as a weapon. It had a hook. So well, that's you got to have a gun. For the workman, they're called workmen, is worthy of his meat. You go preach, you go heal, you go teach, and you accept what they put down for you to eat. You don't get a salary You get what they give you. Try that for your pastor. That's the life of a missionary. He don't know he, he does not have a guarantee most of them do not have a guaranteed income. Into whatsoever city or town not Jewish, I mean, excuse me, not Gentile, not Samaritan, Jewish city or town, he shall enter. Inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go hence. When you go into a city, find out who is of the utmost reputation. Don't run to the harlot's house like Joshua's name. Don't go run to your cliques. You go in there and say, who is the most honorable man or family in this town or city? Ham. He doesn't believe in Christmas and Easter. Ham. Ham. He's got bumper stickers over his car. He's got bumper stickers on his front door. Funny, because yesterday an event happened with the hurricane. I, I had to go to my neighbor's house and, you know, let's talk about my car. I guess the one with all the stickers? Yes. Do your neighbors know you're a Christian? Yes. So is everybody that knocks on my front door when the car is not home. I got a sign to put out in the front yard. It's just I haven't been well enough to get out there in these hurricanes. And after they come inspect my my house, because the apartment people, now I got a I got a sign for the front yard. I may put it out there before he comes. Are you ready for this one? When you come into a house, salute it. When you come to the church, oh, hail old church, oh, hail old church. Well, that's how the church would take it today. 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Oh, glory to God, my church building is going to heaven. And that's what some people think. They think when they get to heaven, their church is going to be there. No, church building. No, house in the Bible are the people in it. Your family. You come into the house. Hi, Mrs. Such and Such. Oh, what fine, wonderful children, grandma, grandpa. Good. To, I think, you know, when I got some time, I want to sit down. I want to talk to you guys. I want to hear wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And if the house be worthy, in other words, you've gotten poor advice. You were supposed to find somebody who is worthy of your staying, and you get there and you find out, you know what, they're not. But if they are, let your peace come upon it. Go in the house, you pray over that house. You ask God to bless that house. You ever hear somebody in the church ask him to bless their building, their church building? Matthew chapter 10. You know, I've heard there are some people in Florida, they don't have a church building no more. It's a pile of rubble. Some of them, their, <coughs> some of their entire life is ruined. Because what their faith and their trust in is that pile of rubble. I, I see if it, go to church, go to church. It's Sunday, go to church. I'm right. My church won't come pick me up. I have no way to go to church. What do you do in China when you got the underground church? See, you're looking as a building, not as people. You go to church, go to church. All right. How's your family? How is your wife? How is your children together in a house as a family, as a church where two or three are gathered together? How is your standing as a family before God? Your wife walking with the Lord, church. Your children walking properly with the Lord, your church. Are you home with your family when you are able to be home with your family? Or do you go out in the boat? Do you go out in the car? Do you go out? How you doing? Your wife is upset. She's got problems. I'm going to go knock on doors. And the Bible says you go take care of your wife. Paul writes over 1 Corinthians 7. I, I want to give money to this missionary. You know, really, this is the last money we have for the month or for the week. My wife is really tired. Missionary or take her out to eat. The Bible says take her out to eat. <laughs> Bible says if your wife needs love and care and all that, uh, you better stay home, give her love and care. I mean, you can go knock on a thousand doors. And one day you come home, your wife says, you know, I've had it with you. I'm going. What are you leaving me for? You don't take care of me. You don't love me. You know. That didn't cost you anything at you. And if it be not worthy, let your peace return on you. If they have not been sociable, they have not been counted worthy. You walk out of that house, say, Lord, don't bless them. John says that, is he a second, third John? Don't you bless, don't you say God speaks. You wonder where John got that from. And whosoever shall not receive you, get away from me. Take it to the church house. You're driving people away. Judge not easy be judged. Nor hear your words. When you depart out of the house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. I've done that twice. One event, I'm not going to mention any. 
something horribly happened to somebody. I don't know if it's because I did that, but I did that. The city of Daytona Beach and its merchants and the mayor and the people involved in the farmer's market have had enough of the preaching. And it got to the point that the people say, you know, we wish you were dead. I, I almost died. I said, you know, I almost died. I'm still alive. I'm back here to get a gospel. I wish you dropped dead. I wish you died. I said, you guys really feel like that? Yes, we do. Called my daughter over, took off my shoes, and I scraped the dust off here. Within a year or two years, so far, two major hurricanes have come to this area, and some of the buildings, as of last night's hurricane, yesterday's hurricane, are deemed unsafe and probably will never be safe. You say that's because you, I don't know. I don't know, but you don't, you, you don't want God, you want Mother Nature? I kept hearing them say, well, look at what Mother Nature's doing, look at what Mother Nature's doing, like, uh-huh, that's what God's doing. Whosoever shall not receive you or hear your word, when you depart out of their house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. Don't even have that dust on your feet. Remember Jesus washed their feet? He says, you better dust that. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable than the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than that for that city. Sodom and Gomorrah did not have the twelve disciples. They did not have the word of God. Now, we don't know how much Lot told them of the end. But we do know that Lot went to his family, his sons-in-law, and he was mocked. Now, anything else with Lot, we don't know. You got 12 men, 13 Jesus, and probably maybe others, going throughout all the cities and towns of Israel, preaching the kingdom. Now, don't say, well, you know, fire and brimstone hasn't fallen on Israel. It doesn't say that. It says the day of judgment. Some Gomorrahites, and whatever you call them, are going to stand to judgment. They're going to be judged by their works. When these people in the time of the disciples, the time of Jesus, the Jews step up to God and say, You know, as Thaddeus preached to you, do you know even Judas preached, preached to you? Do you know that Peter healed people from you? You saw your Messiah. Sodom and Gomorrah, I didn't see that. Behold, I send you forth as sheep, Israel, in the midst of wolves. That's the sheep that are enemies of God. They're Jews, but they're pretending Jews that are Jews against God. Doctrinally, I know, listen, you can apply it spiritually. Now, I'm not taking this chapter spiritually. I'm taking this chapter doctrinally. They are sent only to Jews. They are going amidst the sheep, Jews, and wolves, Jews. Now, I don't know what animal eats its own kind. When I grew up as a boy in New London, we would go fishing. And what we had, we had this fish called a cunner. It's a very bony fish, and they're a challenge to catch. But you caught a lot of them, and they're bait suckers. They knew how to suck the bait off your hook. You caught one, and when you ran out of bait, you were cut up in that cunner. 
you would put him on the hook and his buddies would start eating him. Sheep, devouring sheep, and that's in the prophecy that we read in Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. I've got a couple of messages on big, fat shepherds. Behold, therefore, ye therefore wise as serpents. Be slick as the devil. And harmless as doves. You're going to the devil's ground. Know the tactics of the devil. Paul will tell the Christians. We are not, dece we are not deceived. By the tactics. And I don't know. Of what the devil does. We're, we're not ignorant of his devices. And he's telling the twelve, including Judas. You go the ways of a serpent against the serpent. But you better be harmless. Don't carry a gun. They don't have guns, but. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to counsel. This is the book of Acts. This stretches beyond the ministry of Jesus. They will scourge, beat you in the synagogue. That's what happened to Peter. That's what happened to John. That's what will happen to Paul. He shall be brought before governors, kings for my sake. Paul. Peter and John. And the lives of the, the, the apostles, if you read Fox's Book of Moderators. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Not only are you going to have the problem with the Jews, the wolves, now you're going to have problems with the Gentiles, Book of Acts. In chapter 10 of the disciples, don't go to the Gentiles. And in chapter 18, the Gentiles will be your enemy. But when he delivered you up, take no thought or what ye shall speak. Don't rehearse it. Don't write it down. It shall be given you in the same hour that you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. God, Jesus, will tell them later in John, I am leaving you, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will give you the Comforter, and the Comforter will dwell in you. And in the book of Acts, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will do the speaking. I think in Acts chapter 2, I think Peter was overwhelmed when the Holy Spirit took over his mouth. Now, preaching and teaching, and I've had, especially on the street ministry, I've had it, and there's no script. You preach. And you wonder, because somebody will come up, they'll, they'll be happy, they'll be angry. You know what you said? Personally, no, I forgot. Well, how dare you say that against me? I wasn't aiming at you, sir. I'm just preaching the gospel. Yeah, you, 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 you're peeping on me. No, no, I'm not. Somebody will come to you. Glory to God. You know, I was just thinking about that. I had that question. I was wondering from God. I thank you for what you just said. Sometimes me, I'm like, what did I say? And the brother shall deliver the brother to death. A Jewish person will kill 
will will frame, will ostracize another Jew if they receive Christ. A, a friend of mine put on a video, put on a thing on Facebook the other day. This woman recently died. She's elderly. Her family beat her, stoned her, rejected her because she came home and said, I receive Jesus as my Savior. They have been so ostracized by Israel, the missionary churches had to send relief to Jerusalem. They had to sell their houses and give their money to the church, not because of a fat, fat preacher, because they had to pool the money to get finances, to get food, and get means for the people to survive. The father, the child, the child shall rise up against his parents and cause them to be put to death. That's Jews versus Jews doctrinally. I could put that in 2022, but I'm not doing that tonight. He said, to go not the way of the Gentiles. So he's talking about Jews facing Jews, and you may think that they're your family, they're your kinship, they're your enemies. Paul says, I got pearls of my brethren, of the Jews. You shall be hated of all men. Okay. There's your Gentiles. There's your Jews. Don't say church. There's no church. Timothy, there is no Christians here. They were first called Christians at Antioch. All men right now in the context of the verse are Jews and Gentiles. And they're going to hate you. Who? The apostles. Why? Well, Paul said, have I, have I become your enemy? Because I've spoken the truth. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. That is not church age doctrine. That is not the means of a Christian to be saved. To be saved, I have put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. I don't endure to the end to get to heaven. You run to Matthew with your church. Okay, what do you do at 22? Come on, preacher. Get the Hebrew. Get the Greek. You get out of the pulpit. And rightly divide. The Jewish salvation right now with Jesus alive and the tribulation period yet future will be you will have to endure. You're not saved by the, by the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus is still living at this point. And what are you going to do in the tribulation period? It says, the souls of them that had been beheaded. Well, they endured to the end till they were executed. And they went to heaven. But when they persecute you in this city, Jerusalem, and Jewish cities, in Galilee, flee unto another, book of Acts, It wasn't unto Philip. I'm trying to think of the Philip. Yeah, Philip, the Ethiopian. They started reaching out broader. For verily I say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel. The cities of Israel. Let me give you a clue, please. Here we go. Ready? That's Jewish. Till the Son of Man come. What's that mean? 
Tribulation period, 144,000. The 144,000 are going to travel all over Israel, preaching and teaching the kingdom and Jesus the Messiah. And all the world, including Satan, is going to hate him. Moses and Elijah are going to rise up and they're going to be killed. And then they're going to have Mary Christ Mass. Mary Christ Mass! We brought you a gift for Jesus? No, because his prophets were killed. And it's not toilet paper. Come on, Jesus. You mean, I don't get gold, silver. I gave you toilet paper for your birthday. No, 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 no. That's the tabernacle. That's the Feast of Tabernacle. Not Tammuz. The disciple is not above his master, rabbi, teacher. Notice it's not a capital M. You approach a rabbi. You approach a Pharisee, a Sadducee, you treat them with respect. You want me to bring it up to date today for a moment? If you come across President Biden, you don't call him anything but president. You don't say anything to him but president. You give him the respect. You give him the honor due to the office of the president. Back to the context. Nor the servant above his Lord, small L. You come across your boss, you treat him with respect. You treat him with honor. I let my light shine, and I call my boss every idiot word under the book. I gossip, I spend all my time at the water cooler, but my light shines. I don't do all the work I'm supposed to do, but I let my light shine. Your light bulb's been dead. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. Faithful, right, obedient, uh, uh, nice, I don't like that word, cheerful, respective, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, that's what they've been calling Jesus, that is the unpardonable sin. They were saying that Jesus is, has the power of the devils because he is the devil. That is the unpardonable sin. So if they're telling me I got the power of Satan, how much more shall they call them of his son? What do you think they're going to say about you? Later in, in the Gospel of John, they're going to say, the world hated me. Don't worry about it hating you. Peter, they're going to give you an upside down cross. Why? Because they gave me a cross. If you are a Christian in a church group and the world and your community and people love you, you're doing something wrong. You know what the, you know, I've heard I heard a couple of people say, you know what the mayor of Daytona Beach thinks about me? You mean that loud mouth that screams and hollers on the street? You know what, about three or four weeks ago, you know what the mayor of Daytona Beach got from me? He got a, he got a mail, he got a letter in the mail with a gospel track. Fear them not, therefore. And that fear is, don't worry about they're going to kill you. You fear them with a reverent fear. You know, I heard something about with King Charles III, he was egged. They arrested him 
and they applied charges to them. We got this person in Russia, eh, let me know, let me go, let me go, I broke the law, what do you mean I gotta be in jail? Hey, that's the law, buddy! You sit your butt down, you shut up! That's Romans 13. You obey, you obey and fear the powers that be. For there is nothing covered and shall not be revealed. All right, how they treat you, what they say about you, will be revealed at the judgment of God. People knock on doors, people preach on streets, people have an open Bible, people pass out gospel tracts, people who witness for Jesus. The people that they talk to, the people that they come across, the people that they meet, the pe they will all stand at either judgment. And it will be all open. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in the light. You know, when Jesus got together and teach him, it's what he is right now. He's speaking to the twelve. You go out there and tell them what I'm telling you. Don't you have no secret me, secret handshake, secret orders, secret stuff, and we got these golden things locked up over here behind us, and you don't know what it is, and you got, and hey, bring it out. Jesus said, you're going to go to hell. Tell them. Jesus said there's mansions in heaven. Tell them. Not cottages. And what you hear in the ears, preach ye upon housetops. Get out there in the street. That's the house. Get out in the street. Hey, this is what Jesus said. Hey, shut up. Oh, you shut up. Jesus said. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, you turn people away. That's not what my pastor did. That's Jesus said, get on the house stop. We're a house stop. They're by a street. What's the street? You're preaching. You're telling them. Get you know, on the house stop. means everybody can hear you. I know. I'm a street preacher. And boy, they're going to say things about you. Cops told me every Saturday, 911 dispatch would get phone calls about me. He's here again. He's screaming. No, I'm not screaming. I'm preaching. Fear not them that kill the body. But I'm not able to kill the soul. A hurricane came. It destroyed everything in Daytona Beach. It destroyed everything on the, on the Gulf Coast. It ruined your houses. It ruined your cars. It ruined your jobs. It ruined your churches. It ruined your finances. But it didn't ruin you. There's been only four deaths so far in Hurricane Nicole. You're still alive. If that power, that hurricane, which is not Mother Nature, it is the power of the Almighty God, and it is. But rather fear Him that's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The ultimate, the ultimate destruction is when you are cast naked and empty into a darkness of gnashing of teeth in hell, the lake of fire forever. That's God doing it. And your insurance company, and FEMA, and the government, and the governor, and the president, and your mama ain't going to do nothing about it. And you don't fear God. This nation does not fear God. Well, it's El Nemo. It's global warming. It's this. It's, it's Mother Nature. Oh, you're wrong. We'll get over this. The insurance companies will come in. Ta, ta, da! Excuse me. For the last year, insurance companies have been folding up in Florida. We had Hurricane Eon, Ena, whatever his name is. Nobody knows. You drive down the road before Nicole and you saw all these signs were blown out. They have yet to be fixed. 
I've been to hurricanes before, Hurricane Michael. Signs were blown away. Within a couple weeks, they were back up. Not this time. We're still cleaning up a month after Eon all the trees and debris. You bear fear God, the God who made the hurricane. There was an earthquake over in the Pacific. You bear fear the God that made that earthquake and the tsunami and the famines. Your grocery stores are getting empty. You better fear the God that will put you into hell by rejecting his own. You better get on your knees. You better repent. You better say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me the sinner that I am. Your condominium ain't going to do nothing for you. They got condominiums down here on the beach side. And they're saying right now, they will not ever go into those buildings to get their stuff out. Multi-million dollar houses. Just as trash as a person who lives in a motel room. As God giveth rain upon the just and the unjust. God's trying to get you attention. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Well, evidently, then they are. And one of them shall fall on the ground without your body. If a sparrow drops dead on the ground and the father knows it, you better know he takes care of you. He, has, he knows how many stars there are. He has them by name. And one of those stars becomes a shooting star. He said, I don't know. I'm just making up. There goes Oscar. I don't I made up a name. Here goes Daphne. There's that stupid huddle. One day God's going to get his foot. He's going to kick that Hubble. Now listen, I like Hubble because Hubble brings us back some beautiful, wonder. those beautiful wonder. Look, you need to look at those pictures of Hubble. That's a magnificent of God, and man doesn't see it with the naked eye. God does. We got a mighty, colorful God. They say black lives matter. No, all colors of the spectrum matter to God. And God said, he made the stars awful. Oh, that's a side note. But the very hairs on your head are numbered. God's a great accountant. Have you ever read the book of Numbers and Chronicles? If God can keep track of Numbers and Chronicles, don't you think he's got a book with your name on it? In heaven, my friend, saved or lost, there's a book with your name. Even the laws, the Bible says, at the great white throne judgment, and the books were open. They say uh, Gallagher died today. The book, I don't know if he saved or not. The book of Gallagher. How many watermelons he smashed? How many times he used that perverted word? I don't know if he saved or not. I hope he was, but can't do anything now. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more, more, more valuable than the sparrows, many sparrows. Tell that to Peter. No, don't save the whales. No, don't save the manatees. Get out there and get the souls of men saved. You are more valuable than an eagle's egg. That fetus in the womb is more valuable and then a whale. God didn't die for the dogs. God didn't die for the pussy cat. God died for man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Save the whales for after the green beans. Save the cows in India to give them food to eat so they don't starve to death. Whosoever, oh, there's a whosoever, whoso therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. How you doing with the name of Jesus? Are you a Christian? Oh. 
I'm only a Christian on Sunday. Some SMO, Sunday morning only. Well, whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny him before the Father, which is in heaven. Who's that? I don't want to mention his name. He didn't mention my name. He didn't praise my name, but he knows the name of every player in the football team. He knows every player in the baseball team. He knows all the actors and the roles of that movie. But he didn't mention me. Think not I am come to send peace on earth. Peace on earth for Christmas time. I have come not to send peace, but a sword. That sword is the word of God. That's the second Advent reference. Revelation 19. For I am come to set a man at vengeance against his father, a daughter against her mother. Jewish again. Jewish, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Mom, Dad, I receive you, so, uh, Yeshua, the Messiah. Get out of my house. Mother, turn off that candle. Blow that candle. My son is dead. That's what the Jews say. I know Jews are saying. They told me about their family. I know one Jew said they had a mock funeral for their child for him. And a man's foe shall be they of their own household. I wonder how Peter's mother in law was after all that. He that loveth father and mother more than me, are not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You better put Jesus first. When it came to World War II, those Jews, and their children's lives were put under life. Book of Foxes, Book of Mara, are you a Christian? Are they stabbing the daughter? They got the child's hand over fire. Are you a Christian? Are you going to denounce your Christianity? Is they're about to rape your wife? They all think they're doing it for God. He that taketh not the, his cross. This is before the cross of Jesus. He that taketh not his cross. There's been no cross of Jesus yet. We're carried to take the cross, not a couch. We don't have a bag of potato chips with a remote control as a Christian. We have a cross. I want that cross has slivers. You ever get a sliver? They work with wood and you got a sliver at the end of the day? I bet those cross were heavy. There are people that walk around America, they're, they're, they're carrying a cross on roller skates. That's not what Jesus means. You stand up for the Word of God and you let the world try to knock you down. You let the devil try to get you. You stand up. You stand up. You're a military Christian. With armor. Stand! As we tell the disciples, stand! Don't give in! Don't give up! Your family's going to hate you. The Jews are going to hate you. The devil's going to hate you. When you get up in the morning, does the devil's alarm clock ring? He's getting up! <clears throat> and follows after me. He's not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Acts. Tribulation. He that loses life for my sake shall find it. All right. Are you saved? You give up your life for Jesus? No, 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 no. We are saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Not by works. This is not. This is not. This is not church age place to be. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You're going to listen to the messenger. You're going to listen to the preacher. You obey the preacher. You obey God. You go out there and you, you witness how God wants you to witness. You're an ambassador of God. They trust you. They believe in you and your words. 
Then they believe on Jesus. Then they believe on God. You better not be an idiot. He that he that received the prophet and a prophet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't they say there's no prophets in the church age? The prophets are gone. He that received the prophet in the name of a prophet. How many churches have I been in? How many churches have I been in? I've been in, going to a new church. Right, open your Bibles to Matthew. You know, there should be a thing called Matthew onlyism. Never mind Paul. The only book of the Bible we run to is Matthew. Receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man. In the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. That's not the Christian. I am rewarded for what I do to Jesus. What I do for Jesus. Well, about Jesus. Whosoever shall give to drink unto me, excuse me, unto one of these little ones. Little ones. He's talking about children. What do you do with that little one? Now, I've had many times, my public mission, I've had people come up and give me water. Ice cold water. Good water. Amen, glory. I ask God to bless him. But take one look at me. I'm not a little one. I have people come up to me, you're a glutton. Well, I know, God's blessed me. I confess my sins. I ain't a little one. Only give a cup of water only in the name of, his, of a disciple. I've had people come up, give me water and say, I'm doing this for Jesus. No one have I... Here, here's a cup of water by the Simon Peter. Here's a cup of water for the Apostle John. Read the context. Read the words. I said, I've had people come up and give me water. I've had people give me water in the name of Jesus. No disciples. A guy one time, he says, you know, I feel that, that the Lord led me to buy you this water. I said, you know, I, I got water with me, but I, thank you. I popped that water open because it was there available. Oh, that's ice cold water. It's a lot colder than my water. In the name of a disciple, disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose a reward. That's not salvation. We are in a time where Jesus is living and breathing. And he's talking to the 12 disciples.